We have a special interview for you today on Mihas uh, 340 Television, Mihas International, as the television uh, station is actually celebrating its 20th anniversary. That's Mihas 340. And uh, over the years, uh, the company's continued to grow. Uh, currently, there are four means of communication. There's Radio Mihas, Mihas 340 Television, Mihas Weekly Newspaper, and the web, mihascomunicacion.org. And uh, there's uh, lots of professionals that make everything happen, the journalists, the camera operators, sound technicians, publicists, designers, administrators, and of course, directors. And um, 20 years ago, the picture was quite different. And I have Martin Wood with us. And uh, he, at the time, uh, when the first English uh, programme went out on the 7th of June 1994, he was head of English programming for the TV, the international side of it. Good afternoon, Martin. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 340 International. Yes. In the old days, were, I was thinner then. <laughs> we haven't got widescreen as we have now. <laughs> well, 20 years ago, everybody was much younger and yeah. obviously thinner. Yeah, for sure. 20 years and 20 kilos. That's the difference with me. <laughs> <laughs> One for each year. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, quite, quite different in those days. Um, you were with your um, wife doing this programme, Nessie. Yes. And um, as we say... Uh, the Spanish side was the 6th of June, the inauguration, and the English side was the 7th of June. So how did this come about? How did you come to, to be here um, for the, the start of all the programmes in English? We, we came um, to visit 340 Studios uh, in 1994. We've been working on building up English language programming. And uh, we came here because uh, we'd heard that 340 TV would have the biggest coverage of the, of the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, and that interested us um, with our concept of what we would like to do, which was to give live TV seven days a week in English to the, the expats and, and the tourists. Mm -hmm. um, so when we met with the uh, station director back in those days, he was quite excited by the idea that not only would they have a great programming in Spanish, uh, but they would also have a, a complete uh, programming in, in foreign language as well. Mm. Yeah, and uh, takes, I mean, that, that amount of uh, coverage every day live yeah. involves a big team. Yeah. I mean, we've just been seeing on the screen here now yourself being oh interviewed God, by Maddie Common. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this, of course, was for the inauguration. Maddie Common is still as beautiful now as she was she then. She is, isn't she? Hasn't she hasn't changed at all. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, it, she, hasn't, say the same. she hasn't. <laughs> oh, my <aimed>. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, as I was saying, a big team there. Um, I was looking at um, a newspaper article and I think the programme had been going about two weeks when this came out. Mm -hmm. And it's going, good morning, Costa del Sol. That's what we called it. I mean, I can show it to the camera, but it's just good a morning, black and Costa white Good morning, Costa del Sol. We had our own jingle and everything. Yeah. And um, here we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> And, uh, well, when I actually saw that, it reminded me of the, the film Good Morning Vietnam. Good Morning Vietnam. <laughs> well, of course, back in, that, in, the, in those days on ITV, it was Good Morning uh, Britain, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. So we, we kind of pinched the name from that. Yeah. Right. And, and I noticed, sort of, as I was reading it, I think I, I found probably there was about seven presenters. So it was a real dynamic At show. least seven, yes. Yeah. We, we gave um, most of the presenters one show a week and they would have the week to plan their show, bring it to the studio where our crew was working every day. We were doing live. Um, we did a live uh, news mm -hmm. uh, every day, which we worked very closely with the uh, Spanish counterparts who mm -hmm. were compiling their own news, doing the translation into English, and then we would do, start off the programming with the news and the weather, and then go into the live programmes after that. Yeah, gosh. And, and uh, there was all sorts. There was um, arts and crafts, yeah. uh, specialist programme. Um, and there was also sports. Sports, uh, yes. Yeah. We, we, we covered at the time the annual England-Scotland football match um, for the years that we were here. Uh, but the, I think probably the biggest event that we covered was the seniors' masters that Lou Hode put on in his tennis uh, club in Mihas, mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately he died two weeks before the very first one. But along with the Spanish side of 340, we actually covered the entire tournament um, in English and in Spanish, and mm -hmm. 
uh, viewers will know that on stereo you have a left and a right channel. Left channel was in English, right channel was in Spanish. <laughs> First time it had been done. Fantastic. Uh, and we interviewed all the, 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 um, the, the tennis stars that came across. Of course, we had Mant Manolo Santana, he's based here. Uh, we had Ken Rosewall, Rod Laver, um, uh, McNamee McNamara, Buster Mottram. Oh, God. I can't remember all the names, but all those top players were all in Mihas at that yeah. time. That's fantastic. It was phenomenal. Isn't it? Yeah. Phenomenal. And uh, I presume um, a lot of the, uh, as you can see, a lot of the uh, cameras, the technical side was completely different then. <laughs> and everything would take yeah. longer, wouldn't it? Agustin there, yeah. yeah. Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gosh, yeah, I remember seeing this. This was played many, many times in between the programmes back in those days. Because yeah. we had to rush to change things, so we put on this five-minute music video, which is what we're watching, uh -huh. smoking in control room, not allowed <gasps> not anymore. Not allowed now, no. Uh, and we'd all be running around changing seats, the curtains, bringing down backdrops, and, <laughs> and that was because it was all live. Yes. Of course, it did have its pitfalls. Um, the, the very first day we went on live, uh, which was the 8th of June, uh, we had a phone call at nine o'clock in the morning from our newsreader saying she'd got a job. Oh, and, you... And she couldn't come. Oh, goodness. So we stood there with all the news ready and no one to read it. So we went through to the radio and there was a presenter called Mike Parkhurst working at the time and down on our knees begging him to come through and read the news for us, which he did faultlessly. Ooh, Absolutely faultlessly. Didn't do it very many times after that. <laughs> um, but it was, you know, one of the things of going live. That, yes. What do you do? You, you have to adapt. You have to improvise, don't you? And adapt, yeah. like you say. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to tell me that you read the news then. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And following that, of course, was our inauguration. There we uh, are. Oh, oh, my goodness. There I am. That's <laughs> Nessie and myself at the controls. Uh, that's back in 1994. Um, and that control board is still there, but I've been told by the technicians that it doesn't work. There we are. Oh, yeah, lovely. That's a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah, a... I don't see any difference, do you? No, not at all. You're younger, in fact. <laughs> Both of you are younger. Like Nessie looks the same. <laughs> um, now, I d did interrupt you with that lovely image. Um, and you were oh, yeah, about on the same day, I mean, yeah. things happen in threes. The second thing to happen was... Um, Craig James, who sadly is no longer with us, mm -hmm. and Mary Harbo were hosting the very first chat programme. Mary being a journalist and, and now an author, isn't and she? radio yes. presenter yeah. as well, as was, was, was Craig. And uh, they decided that it'd be really nice to start the day off with a Bucks Fizz. So as we were counting them down, as happens, you know, you can hear 10, 9, 8, Craig picked up the bottle of Carver and the cork went and sprayed him <laughs> <laughs> completely with Carver. So as the camera panned in to the settee that they were sat on, Craig was sat in a very unnatural position so as not to show his trousers were soaking wet. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually a good point um, to stop just now. Okay. And uh, we do have um, Craig James actually talking about the programme and its right. contents. Yeah. Hello, I'm Craig James and I'll be comparing or co-hosting the programme starting from tomorrow between 11 and 1. Mary Harbo unfortunately cannot be here with us tonight but she does send her best wishes and we'd like incidentally to wish you good luck with your TV and congratulations on getting it on air today. Our programme will be a mix of programmes, local people coming in, cookery, magazine sort of our items, a whole host of things, things happening on the coast. Uh, information about town halls, about chemists. Very, very interesting programme, and if listeners would like to take part, they're able to do so. Okay, and a wonderful speaking voice, didn't it? Great voice. Yeah, wonderful voice. Yeah, resonant, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah sad loss, Craig. I yeah. was a great friend of ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a sad loss. Um, now, you were talking, there was a third thing that happened that day. We got to number two. I know, I've now forgotten what the third thing... No, I say things come in threes, yes. and that was the second one. I'm sure something else must yes, have happened. Yes, something else day. would have happened. <laughs> it would probably be my fault, because I was sat mixing the, the cameras. I probably pressed the wrong button. <laughs> um, you were saying about uh, one of the, the wonderful things you did was the Lou Hode seniors. Yeah. Um, but you've also uh, had lots of celebrities at that time. Celebrities, you, you can say, were, were everywhere on the Costa mm. del Sol, weren't they? In those days, you would, if, if you heard uh, of celebrities, it was on radio interviews done by telephone. 
one of our presenters, Maurice Boland, was bringing them across at his own expense for his programme. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had people like Linda Nolan from the Nolan Sisters, uh, Faith Brown, the Impressionist, yes, yeah. uh, Mike McCartney, uh, Paul McCartney's brother, who has his own band, The Scaffold, oh, they were Lily popular. the Pink. Yeah, I think um, everybody remembers that. I think song. everyone does, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and Mr. Motivator was another one that, that uh, you said you remembered as well. Yes, I remember Mr. Motivator. He was huge in, in those days, and when you think yeah. about it, he was just... He did exercises. How come he was such a big star? I know, but I think it was the first time that uh, there'd been that type of a um, motivational exercise programme on TV. On TV. Mm. And then they took it to different locations, didn't yeah. they? And of course, Mr Motivator came here to Spain to, right. to do a, another class on the beach. That's exactly. Yeah. I always remember Morris saying, it must be pretty difficult for your children having a family name like that. Which, of course, there was a little bit of silence then. Oh, you mean they're all called Motivator? <laughs> 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 and of course we had Lonnie Donegan as well yeah, uh, a Mihas Mihas, resident for yeah. many many years again sadly no longer with us and he came on quite a few times he mm. did a lot of work down here mm -hmm. and a gentleman yes a true yeah. gentleman yeah, yeah true gentleman and uh, you you also I mean um, for instance um, Peter Harrison who writes actually for a local newspaper yeah. as well um, he was part of the program he did um, a special D-Day programme, didn't he, he, for he you as well? He actually presented the very first actual programme in English. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a D-Day special that we recorded a week or two before, um, only because setting up and going live uh, on one day for the Spanish side was just going to be too much to do the whole thing again the following day. It gave, it gave us 24 hours to get ready for doing our live programming. Um, but he, he did that uh, as well as a programme called Talking Point, which was Current Affairs, and they also did a program about pets, <laughs> which um, w one or two of them uh, are remembered for all the wrong reasons. And it's not the, the Blue Peter reason with the elephant, but uh, we, he, he ran dry during one of the programmes and all we had for about half a minute was a shot of a tortoise walking across the, the, the studio floor. But still, you know... <laughs> People remember it with great fun, and so I'm sure they do. Yeah, I'm sure a bit, little bit of music there as well. It would have been good. Now, you very kindly brought in yeah. uh, a lovely image This is going image back there. even before yes, 3.40. I'll, I'll let you explain. This is um, a picture of myself and a former um, presenter on Radio Mijas called Tony Parkins. He used to run the, the English programmes on Radio Mijas mm -hmm. uh, with Gabby. Yes, with um, Gabby Ray, yes. And I used to do, because in those days I, was, I had a restaurant uh, called Martin's Bistro, and I used to do a weekly uh, recipe called Chef's Classic Cuisine, mm -hmm. which was also published in the local newspaper. Mm -hmm. And uh, we held a competition on the radio uh, over a period of weeks, and all those people that won got a ticket to come to a barbecue down at the Miramar River site. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there was over 45 people came that day. It was a marvellous day. Great publicity for the station as well. Yeah, as well, yes. Yeah. Yes, of course, um, you'd have had to make the, the most of what was out there to yeah. publicise yourselves. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of different media, was no, there? No, not at all. Not in no. those days, no. Right. But it was the idea of working with Tony. I remember saying to him, do you know, TV's the, the way to go. We have to go TV for the for foreign residents. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't too sure about it, but like uh, two years later, I think it was about 92 we started uh, with a very small company in Fuengirola, just doing one hour of English a week. Mm -hmm. And it's grown to, to what we had when we joined 340. 340 television, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. And um, anything else that particularly stands out um, when you were doing the program? <laughs> in a good way or a bad <laughs> <laughs> Either or. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed having live audience in there was one show we did uh, when foreigners were allowed to vote um, in local elections in Spain. And I decided I would put together a programme informing viewers their right to vote, what they had to do to, to have that right. In other words, get on the padron. Mm -hmm. And I brought in uh, a couple of politicians that weren't particularly welcome by the town hall, but they spoke English uh, and were there to talk about foreigners' right to vote as opposed to their particular policies. Yes, yeah. And I was hauled up in front of uh, a couple of councillors and, and asked what the content of the programme was going to be, and I said, I have no idea, we haven't started it yet. No, and it's live. And had to assure them that uh, they would not be allowed to talk about their own politics. They were there 
to talk about uh, the foreigners' right to vote, and that's exactly what it was, and I'm very proud that I stuck up for it. <laughs> I think it was the first time it happened. I don't think it's ever happened again. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you were involved um, with uh, Me Has 340 Television for several years, yeah. uh, but what have you been doing since? Well, after we left 340, um, we decided to go into the um, commercial video market. So we were making uh, promotional videos for companies, uh, for businesses, uh, for tourism, things like that. We were also doing adverts for English TV, because, of course, by that time, Sky had really started to, mm -hmm. to grow. Um, and that, I think, was probably one of the reasons that we were losing a bit of our TV audience because people were, were, had Sky TV and therefore they were watching that in preference. Yeah. Um, so still to this day, we're making adverts for, for British TV. We uh, recently have done uh, one for a, a board game, which we see every Christmas, and it's to do with a shark attack, filmed off Cabopino Beach. Oh, gosh. And very realistic. We had all the people, all the mothers at the shore screaming at the kids to get out when they saw a shark fin, not realising that it was false. Yes. Oh. And I still have the shark fin. It is available for parties if anyone wants it. <laughs> it could give somebody a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, very, very easily, I think. But um, we also do, I also do a lot of work now for international companies that want to have a Spanish influence put into their product. Mm -hmm. So I've, I film things in this area, add it to their videos, and then it's presented back on the internet for, mm -hmm. for viewing. Oh, so you're still being very, very creative. Oh, good heavens, yeah. yeah. I mean, back in 98, we were one of the first companies to stream video on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, it was years before most people did it, and we had a, a very good contact that we used, uh, and we actually had video streaming before many of the major companies in Britain, mm -hmm. which is something I think to be very proud of. I was just going to say that, days. yeah. And nowadays, everyone just takes it for granted. Yeah. You point your phone, you press a button, and you're on the internet. So yeah. in those days, it wasn't quite as easy. No, <laughs> and you were one of the and first. And it still worked. Yes. <laughs> And uh, you've, um, you, before you came to Spain, you, you used to uh, promote rock concerts That's and right, rock yeah, bands. just before I came, yeah. Uh, and you're, you're organising the Pink, circle. Yeah, Pink Floyd yeah. tribute. Yes, we uh, are, at the end concert. of this month, uh, yeah. Friday the 27th. It's the, the latest one that we've been doing, as uh, we've met before up in the Hippodromo when yes. we had the music bar there, yeah. and in the Feria in, in Internacional de los Pueblos. Right. In Fuenquirola, uh, we ran the American cassette and had lots of live acts on there. Yes, I think. Do you know what I think? Um, I remember all the comments on Facebook. I think the American cassette, when you you did it, that yeah. you think you the first year we, first we year. were the best cassette in the fair. We yes, were you were, and yeah. busy all the time, and oh, people and, going, "Well, what's yeah. happening tomorrow? What bands yeah. have you got tomorrow?" You know. And it's back down to the publicity and promotion. This is what we're mm. getting very good at in, in, in our business, that um, using social media, people knew weeks before exactly who was on, what time they were on. They'd come to the door, yeah. there was a QR code, they could scan it with their smartphone yeah. and know exactly what time people were on stage. And it works. Yes, it you does. Know, that's the way we have to go. Yeah. I'd like to see Mijas International Fair move to a bigger venue. Maybe the Hippodrome, I don't know whether that's feasible anymore. I think it is feasible. But I oh. think it, it deserves to be as big as the Fuengirola International Fair. It does, fair. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Seen as how many us were the first ones that created well, that's it. Right. And I covered yeah. it back in those days. We <laughs> used to go around filming it. And in those days, you could because there was a lot of people, but not as many as nowadays. Nowadays, mm. you, you're almost shuffling around all together. Yes, yeah. But in the beginning, I remember, you, the, the different countries took it in turns to give samples of their food and drink. So you would see the mass of people moving slowly around <laughs> for their bit of smoked salmon, then a bit of beer, and then so on. <laughs> but uh, I think... It has to change and uh, the way it is now is, is the way to go forward, but it does need a bigger venue, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if it does, then I would be interested in getting involved. But I think with, it, with the size of it, that it is at the moment, it makes it difficult to, you know, to, to make it a commercial venture yeah, as well. Uh, but, um, uh, now, if anybody wants to know what uh, type of uh, gigs you've got and yes. what, what you're doing, then it's costadeldisco.com, isn't it? costadeldisco.com, yeah. yeah. And first, the front page of it is dedicated to our next concert, which is the Pink Floyd Tribute up in the auditorium, which is a lovely place. Yes, it and is. So many people don't know it exists. They've been up to the church, they've been up to the bull ring, they don't know that the auditorium is there. When mm. you go in, it's... Oh, there's a nice little poster there, good. <laughs> um, the, there's this wonderful open-air auditorium. I think it seats 900 people. 
uh, over a thousand were standing mm -hmm. and um, with all the lighting effects we've got on this night it's just going to be it's going to be wonderful amazing and, yeah looking up to the the sky and yeah. the beautiful warmth that there'll that's be it well. of course it's the yeah. end of june it's going to be perfect and no football that night yes <laughs> <laughs> so it's a break it's the ladies can now say to the husbands right we've had enough of football take me out tonight i want to go and see pink floyd <laughs> yeah exactly well, i want an, i want an evening in me house village yeah yes. exactly yeah. yeah well we have got a lot of people coming mm. that are coming to the concert and then going for a meal afterwards so mm. i think the village is going to be buzzing all night that night that'll be good all right well thank you very much martin you're welcome thank, thank you, you for having me um, and lovely to find out about how things were on the international <laughs> In the old side days, yeah. 20 years ago. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.